In this video we're going to show how to take an ECG from a patient but this time the um, nurse isn't available to take the ECG or I'm seeing the patient out of hours. Martin has kindly agreed to be the subject for this ECG. Uh, the device for taking the ECG in this case is simple. It's the custom made uh, Bluetooth ECG and this is the entire ECG device in my hand. Uh, there are a few basic rules in my mind for taking an ECG by somebody who's not used to taking ECGs like the doctor. And that is, number one, everybody in the practice has to know where the device sits so that they can find it easily. I've taken this from the nurse's room in our practice. We know exactly where it is at all times and whoever takes it has to put it back there. Number two, you have the, the, the GP has to have uh, simple instructions written nearby so that he knows what to do with the ECG. In our case, in every doctor's room, we have an instruction leaflet which tells the GP how to take the, the test. Attach the cables to the patient, turn the machine on, and then go to the patient's file and click some buttons. Also, we have here a simple diagram of where the leads should be. This is uh, ride your green bike for the arms and legs and uh, the leads on the chest because uh, I often forget precisely where to put these. So that's important. So it's really important that everybody knows and has easy access to both the machine and instructions on how to do it. From then on, it's actually very easy to take an ECG with this uh, device. So with Martin's permission, I'm now going to hook him up to the device and I'm going to go to the PC and click a button and the rest will happen automatically as this is a Bluetooth device. Uh, for the chest leads, although I've been doing this for years, um, I always need to look at the chart to see precisely where to put the um, electrodes. Uh, the first one will go on the fourth intercostal space on the right. I put it in there. The second one will go on the fourth intercostal space on the left of the sternum. That's C2. C4 is the way I do it. goes in the midclavicular line, one rib down. C3 goes halfway between those two. C5 goes on the anterior axillary line. And C6 goes in the mid axillary line. So now I've placed his electrodes. What I need to do now is to get the um, ECG device and attach it. Okay, so I'm attaching the, uh, the chest leads first. C1, they're very easy to attach. I've got it even written down here where they should go, which is handy for me. C2, uh, C3, and my other chest leads are here nearby, and I can just read them off the lead. Uh, C4, C5, and C6. Are you comfortable there, Martin? That's fine. Now, will you let me know if any of these come loose, because you'd know possibly before I would. I'm then going to attach the limb leads. On the right-hand side, I have got uh, the uh, red is always on the top, which is, follows the mnemonic, ride your green bike. I've just seen it on the, on the chart there. So it's uh, red in your right arm. And uh, the bike part of it is black for your right foot which is the neutral and yellow is on the uh, arm, left arm and uh, green for his left leg. So now I have to merely turn on the, the device here uh, by pressing the button there and I get my green light to tell me the device is turned on. Now I have to do no more with the patient except ask him to relax while I go over to the PC and click the button for the software which will actually take the ECG. Okay, so uh, the patient is on the couch and the ECG machine is turned on and I am in the patient's record and I'm simply clicking now on the ECG button, the Cardio 110 in this case button, and the software takes over completely. As I said earlier, there is no lead 
between the ECG device, that is the patient, and the computer. This is all done by Bluetooth. The software has, is now recording the ECG so I can monitor the patient uh, for as long as I like while he's lying there with the ECG turned on. Um, in this case, uh, it's a normal ECG, I can see it. Uh, so I'm going to press auto start on the software, which will uh, take 10 seconds of reading and record it and save it directly into Health One, in this case, into the patient file in Health One. All of this is done from within the patient management system. Um, that's done, it's recorded the 10 seconds. I click on confirm and all of the ECG data is saved into the patient file. Also, there is a PDF document, which is a, the tracing itself, is saved into the patient file. I can, if I wish now, uh, open the document and print it if I want to give it to the patient if he's going to hospital, or I could email it to the hospital. But in this case, the ECG is actually normal and I am going to ask the patient, uh, tell the patient that his ECG is okay and leave him go home. Mm -hmm.